Time for the roundtable now, joined by Paul Jago, editorial page head of the Wall Street Journal, ABC's Koki Roberts, Democratic Congressman Keith Ellison from Minneapolis, Republican strategist Anna Navarro from CNN, and John Heilman, New York Magazine, also the author of Double Down, The Game Change of 2012. Thanks to you all for being here. Uh, let's talk about this Republican race. We saw Chris Christie, we saw uh, Rick Perry right there, Paul Jago, and it's clear that Christie's trying to own the center of this board, and he's got all kinds of conservatives lining up from Perry to Cruz to Rubio to Paul, all, on, all to his right. Well, that's, He would argue about that, I suppose. Right. Well, yeah. And I think that he shouldn't take that bait. He should not run as a moderate. He should avoid that kinds of distinctions. Those are the kinds of things the, the press likes to put on him. He should come out and have a reform agenda of his own that can appeal to all sides of the Republican spectrum, transcend the so-called conservative moderate divide. Don't play that game. And I think with his record in New Jersey, uh, he's going to have appeal to an awful lot of Republicans, and particularly because he's a governor. That's he's exactly right. Side of Washington. That, I mean, that's and that's going to really be. And that's that home in the interview. Absolutely, and and look, it's not. It's, I think the way he would frame it is not conservative or moderate. It's pragmatist, and that's of course what governors are. Uh, they have to run states. They have to balance budgets. They have to do things that you know sometimes they hate doing. I mean, he made the point to me later that they also elected a Democratic legislature, so he knows that he's he's got people keeping an eye on him the, uh, the, at the voters' behest, and so. No, this is a much more practical, get things done role than you and, see in Washington. And Anna Navarro, the coded question of the week, is he the Republicans, uh, Paul Jago talked about the reform agenda, is he the Republicans Bill Clinton or the next Rudy Giuliani? <laughs> I think he's the Republicans Chris Christie. And I think he can't run as either a moderate or conservative. He's got to run as Chris Christie. He's got a very defined brand and larger than life personality already that we're all aware of. And he's got to hone in on the point that he got these numbers. He got 51% of the Hispanic vote in a blue state. George, this is after we just came af, uh, out of a race where Mitt Romney got 27 percent right. of the vote. If anybody could get near the numbers that Christie got with African American voters, with Hispanic voters, with women voters, with independents, we'd be in the White House and, and having a, hell of a celebration pin, for you. Pinned down in immigration, but Keith Ellison, you know, Democrats already taking aim at Chris Christie this week, and they're facing a little bit of a, uh, a dilemma. The more they push the argument that he's a hard-edged conservative that could end up helping him in the primary. Well, well, he's too conservative for me, but, <laughs> but, but here's the reality. He's for common sense gun, gun safety. He accepted the money uh, for the Medicaid expansion. And uh, he, uh, he was out there stumping for New Jersey for Sandy relief. These are pragmatic things. But I think just doing what any public servant would do doesn't make you a superstar. But in this, but it is a Republican field, it, apparently it does. John Heilman, we, something remarkable happened in your book. I mean, the entire vetting file, we just talked to Chris Christie about it from the vice president to search for Mitt Romney, leaked to you guys. Uh, you heard his, his response right there, not worried about another round of scrutiny, even though he knows it's coming if he decides to run for president. Well, he's smart enough to know it's coming. And, you know, what we reported on the book is that there were a, uh, the, the governor's, or Governor Romney's team looked at him really closely for vice president. They looked at a series of things that are in the public record, but that most people in national politics don't know. The fact that for a period of time he was a lobbyist and a lobbyist for the Securities Industry Association when it was run by Bernie Madoff. The fact that the <laughs> Justice Department Inspector General uh, investigated him for expense account abuse and was very critical of him. A lot of things that are out there, again, just below the surface. People don't really know about them. And then there was a series of other things that they wanted from Chris Christie that he was not forthcoming, in their view, about. Things like his health records, things like his other lobbying clients, uh, things like a defamation lawsuit that had been filed against him, his brother who's involved in an investment scandal. There was a lot of stuff they wanted from him that he didn't turn over. The one thing he said on the interview today that was not factually true is that Governor Romney was unaffected by those things. In fact, when he got the full document, the debt vetting dossier that we report about and a quote from in the book, that was the day when Governor Romney looked at that dossier and pulled the plug on Chris Christie. He thought that the full range of issues were a lot of potential landmines and there were a lot of unanswered questions. So none of those things may be smoking guns, George, but you know that when he steps up on the national stage, right. and I think he knows this too, the level well, actually, of scrutiny I don't think is going to be much, it. much higher. I, I don't think he does know it because right. nobody knows it until they're right. there. Well, and well, you can know it in election. You know, yes. but not have the well, person. Anna, you spoke with you. the Romney team about this, right. right? I spoke to Beth Myers, who's a friend of mine and a colleague of mine right she now. She ran at, the vice presidential search. And she search. ran the vice presidential search. I spoke to her last night about this. She's a colleague of mine at, uh, in Harvard right now. And uh, she told me that none of these issues had anything to do 
with why uh, Christie wasn't picked. He, she also said that she'd never heard of Project Gold, Goldfish until about 10 days ago. So it wasn't something that, you know, which is what in the book it's called. Uh, she doesn't think it's factually correct. She talked to me also about having to make that phone call to Chris Christie in uh, the summer when she found out this was all coming out and said he had been incredibly professional about it and just very respectful and understanding. Yes, was he disappointed? Could he, could he have screamed at her? Yes, but that's not what happened. I think this is a good thing for Chris Christie because all of this stuff is going to get flushed out two years before the point, which is a lot better than it getting flushed out in the midst of an one, election. Yeah. One of the other things that's going to get flushed out the next couple of years, I'm going to bring this to you, Paul, as you go, is this whole struggle, battle, whatever you want to call it, between the establishment wing of the Republican Party and the Tea Party wing. And both sides came away from the election on Tuesday with their arguments. Right. Well, that, that's right. I mean, the defeat in Virginia, the governor's defeat, had many fathers. Uh, <laughs> the, the shutdown hurt a lot. Uh, uh, One, three in ten households in Virginia were personally affected by the government th shutdown. Thirty percent of the votes in Virginia are in the, 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 in the suburbs of Washington. And uh, uh, Cuccinelli, the Republican, lost those by 135,000 votes. And he lost statewide only by 55,000. So the shutdown hurt. But also the Republican established did not think Cuccinelli could win, even though they, he was used and gained in the end. And so the Tea Party Obama saying they didn't back him up. And, right. and there's a, some truth to that. They didn't put enough money in at the end in particular that would have helped them. You know, I wouldn't credit the shutdown with the victory of Terry McCullough. And the reason why is because all these, all these folks like Cuccinelli have been anti-government for a long time. Those public employees know who's on their side and who isn't. The shutdown was just the latest best example of how hostile to government workers this, the, that far right uh, group has, has been. So well, but, but in Virginia, we ask, you know, in our exit polls, do you think government should be doing more or less. And in Virginia, 51% said less. Uh, so, you know, it's not that the well, government. Well, it all depends on are, what? You know, it all the, depends the, on what? The, if you're the, a federal employee, thing, you definitely want the government open and working, well, and you don't like people putting you down. I, what I thought was most interesting in the Tea Party issue was the special election in Alabama. Uh, this was an election for a House seat uh, that is in the Gulf Coast area that has generally uh, sent real legislators to Washington. And Tea Party candidate uh, lost that election with the establishment going very hard against him. And the Republican National Committee, uh, uh, Congressional Committee chairman said he was pleased about that and he said this is a district that sends talented and effective Republican legislators to Congress. That's sending a signal that we're, we'll ready, to, done. we're ready to get things done. One of the other things we saw in this election was uh, Cuccinelli in Virginia uh, seemed far behind uh, in the polls a couple of weeks out, talked about nothing but Obamacare the last couple of weeks. It ended up being relatively close, two and a half point uh, race. And, and, and John Hallman, a lot of people looking at that and saying it shows the power of this Obamacare issue. And we also saw, and I want to show this, the president's apology this week. Even though it's a small percentage of folks who may be disadvantaged, you know, it means a lot to them and it's scary to them. Uh, and I am sorry that they uh, you know, are finding themselves in this situation based on assurances they got from me. And they're coming after the president got an earful from a lot of Democrats who are worried right now. Well, this is part of the problem with the Virginia result is that there's no real way to know what happened. And, and if you think about the spending disparity that Paul talked about, you think about the shutdown having its effect. But also, there's no question that at the end, this Obamacare issue became central. And so for a lot of people who are on the right, who believe that it's a winning issue to continue to fight Obamacare, they look at the Cuccinelli result and they think, they, they think it actually gives ballast to their argument. It, it is an issue that is, unfortunately, and this is one of the things we read about in the book as well, Governor Romney could never really litigate the issue fully in 2012. So because of Romney care, he was kind of boxed in. And we never really got, the president can't really claim the kind of mandate. If Rick Perry had been the Republican nominee or Newt Gingrich had been the Republican nominee, Obamacare would have been front and center. And if the president had won, he could have stood up and said, I won, I have a mandate now for Obamacare. That didn't happen. A lot of people on the Tea Party wing of the Republican Party feel like it wasn't really litigated in 2012. And now all the things that have happened with the problems with the website, the problems with the rollout, the apparent mistake by the president have only fueled the fire more to keep fighting this fight and there's no political clarity about whether it's a winner or a loser for Republicans which is why it's not the results from Tuesday are not a clear victory for establishment Republicans Tea Party people feel emboldened right. and not uh, dampened down.
I think we're all emboldened right now in the Republican Party. I actually think the shutdown had the consequence of emboldening the uh, the non-Tea Party branch. Well, you know, you saw Kelly I take Ted Cruz into a uh, room and everybody started opening up on him and saying, stop raising money against incumbent Republicans like me, was saying Kelly Ayotte, who can get elected in New Hampshire. Who are you going to get elected if not? And you're seeing uh, donors step up to the plate. I think you're going to see more organized uh, efforts by non on Tea Party Republicans. We're going to be duking this out for a while until we have a nominee. Republicans are united on the substance of opposition to Obamacare. The, the differences in, uh, on the shutdown were tactical. What, how to handle it. it. This unites Republicans and it's going to unite them, I think, through 2014 because just as they, the voters punished Democrats for the passage of Obamacare in 2010, I think Republicans think they're going to punish Democrats for the implementation failures this time around. And it's going to be a very potent issue. But, but, but what do you do with the fact that that Governor Christie accepted the Medicaid expansion and uh, you know New Jerseyans are going to be better off for it. I mean I think that John has a point when he says that the, the clear it's not clear whether this is good or bad for Republicans. I think it's bad for them to keep on going against uh, the Affordable Care Act because you know this website will be fixed. You will you have. You confident it's going to get fixed by the yeah, end of November? I am confident of it. There's but, but let me just say. Issues than the website. But, well, well, you're, issue. you're right. Here's a bigger People issue. People are very Here's angry a bigger out issue. There, Before we pass the Affordable Care Act, you had 57% of Americans declaring bankruptcy because of medical debt, and now we're not going to be seeing that. That's the deal. Not the fact is people are going to, well, no, 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 people, <laughs> no, no, 57% of all bankruptcy filings were because okay. of medical debt. So thanks for the clarification. <laughs> but my point is, we had a bad situation before. Republicans did nothing about well, it, it could, from 2000 it, to 2006, and now we've done something about worse, it. We can, start to find, is we can start to find that when the employer mandate kicks in, that employers stop coming covering people too. So there are a lot of there are a lot of landmines. If that along happens, the way. all it proves but, is, but, is 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 that but, is that we st we need and a result for the American people where they can get affordable. But I tell you something. He's absolutely right. The, that the, is going to happen. Thing, when you talk to employers, when you talk to business owners out there, they are looking at how much paying the fine is going to cost versus the increased cost but, of covering but the other under thing that's plans the, that require higher standards. Then, 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 so but despite this this argument, uh, it's really the issues only play a certain role in these elections. And Chris Christie had such a landslide that he won everybody, basically. And the, the fact is, is that you look at Virginia, and it's much more of a, a big uh, yellow flag for Republicans, because they won whites really big, but they lost minorities and young people. That's all on the Republican women. side. That's true. But and right now, you're, large seeing, numbers. you're seeing President Obama's job approval rating drop now yes, into the very true. low four zone of bringing this to to John Howe, and I think coming out of the shutdown, a lot of Democrats said, hey, wait, maybe there's a chance uh, we can take back the House next year. But then that can't happen if the president's approval numbers are in the low 40s. It, it's totally true. But there's a there's a lesson in all of these things, which is that a lot of these issues that seem to be game changers for a moment turn out to be really evanescent. And so Paul's point a second ago was right. that the shutdown was a tactical decision Republicans made. They thought that was a political winner. It turned out to be a political loser. Now the Obamacare thing seems to Republicans to right. be a political winner. I don't think tactically necessarily that a year, a little over a year, a little less than a year from now, that what is the Republican solution on Obamacare? Right. Well, repeal is, repeal well, has well, never well, been popular. I didn't say that so, Repu Republicans need to have an alternative. There's no question about they it. They don't but, have one. Well, well, I think that there are a lot of uh, available uh, uh, policies they could sign on. Like but to in 2014, it, but the motive, the, is, the Obamacare is becoming a metaphor for the failure of government. But it may the not be, but it may not be two months from now. It may not be six months from now. It may not be. we got to take a quick break. More roundtable coming up.